Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is the beginning of a new reading vlog. I haven't done a reading vlog in quite some time. I thought it would be a good time to do one because I know I have a lot of stuff going on in the next couple of weeks. So I think I'm going to be doing a sort of end of July reading vlog. It is currently mid-July but I'm thinking if I film for the next like two weeks, I'll have a lot of cool stuff going on to show you. And I just wanted to sort of do a reading vlog that wasn't just about reading, that was showing a little bit more of my life and the stuff I was doing. Thought that might be fun. So just to give you a brief update on how my summer is going so far, I've just been mostly working. I've done a couple of things with friends, hung out with friends. I saw some fireworks. I've also been going to bookstores a bit with a friend. So some fun things, a lot of work. I'm currently working at the library in the children's department, as well as in the coffee shop that I've talked about. I talk a lot more and show a lot more of my day-to-day -day life over on my Instagram. So if you're not following me, link is in the description, but at this point, I have about three weeks until my boyfriend comes back from his internship. He's been away for 10 weeks and I've been trying to stay busy. I've been doing a lot of stuff for YouTube and Instagram. And I'm also going to be doing a 30 days of reels project soon. So I'm doing all of the pre-filming for that. I really like reels and I think they're really fun. So I wanted to try to put some more out. So I'm currently working on that. Stay tuned for that over on my Instagram. So that's pretty much the update for summer. I haven't been doing a ton of like super crazy stuff. I've just been kind of keeping it low key, working, all that good stuff. So I figured it would be a good time because I have some cool stuff coming up at the end of the month to do a reading vlog. So all of that being said, I am going to take you with me to a coffee shop that I've never been to before. I'm very excited about it. So yeah, let's get going. Okay, here's the tea. The situation is that I started this reading vlog uh, last week and I was like fully ready to fully dive into the reading vlog. I was excited about it. And then I came down with God knows what illness. You can probably still hear it in my voice. Um, not COVID, I got tested, luckily not COVID, but I had some kind of mysterious throat and nose sinus infection situation. I'm okay now, thank goodness, no problems, but I was home for about four days where I did absolutely nothing, which is not like me. <laughs> I had to take off multiple days of work, back to work tomorrow, so I get to be a productive member of society again, which is very exciting. But I didn't even have the motivation or the desire to really read while I was at home. I basically just watched YouTube and laid around and did nothing. So very unproductive. I am very sorry for like the congestion that you can hear in my voice, but I just wanted to update you all. So in the last clip, you saw me at a coffee shop just vibing and reading, and I was reading The Hierarchies by Ross Anderson, which is a book that I was really excited about. And I'm about halfway through at this point. Um, I didn't get a ton of reading done while I was sick, but I did sort of decide that I'm going to be DNFing this book because it's really disappointing me. Like the beginning part, I was like really vibing with it. It's about this robot who is in essence a sex robot and she's purchased by her husband and she lives in this attic and the wife and their child is downstairs and it's all just really dystopian and weird and you know, sci-fi-esque. And I was really vibing with that and I wanted more of the character's mind. I wanted it to be more of a slow burn and kind of seeing her uh, quote unquote psychological development over time because that's what really interests me about AI and interesting stories about AI like with Clara and the Sun. That's really what I wanted from this book. 
and instead I got this sort of weird turn and now it's going down a kind of boring uninteresting path and it's such a chunky book like I don't usually read books that are like this chunky and I know it's really not that long of a book but for me it is so this book being almost 400 pages I'm halfway through and I can't seem to find anything about it that is like still gripping or interesting or like different that I really want to know more about. So I don't know if that, it was just because I was sick, but honestly before I felt sick I was still struggling to finish this, so I think I'm gonna have to DNF it. But at the end of the week I have a play that I'm going to, which I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I'm going to see All's Well That Ends Well at this wonderful outdoor park where they do Shakespeare plays and I love their Shakespeare plays. I've seen many of them, but obviously last season they didn't have them because of 2020 and everything was crazy, but they're opening up again, and so I'm gonna go see a play at this weekend. So I really wanted to have read said play before I went. Usually when I go, I've already read the play for the most part, and sometimes even if I haven't read the play, I don't really care that much because um, I have read a lot of Shakespeare, so whenever I go, it's usually something I've read. But this time I wanted to get the play and read the play right before I saw it in person just to have that interesting comparison. So I'm going to see All's Well That Ends Well. This is the copy that I got. It's the Pelican Shakespeare. I have a collection of these, so obviously I had to get another one to add to my collection because I already didn't have this one. But I really love the cover and I am currently only a few pages into it, um, but it is a very short, obviously it's a play. The only thing about this is that I have to spend some time decoding the language so it doesn't move as quickly as you would, you know, in anticipate in a hundred page book moving or a play moving. Um, obviously Shakespeare is harder to decode, but because I have read so much of it and because I've read a lot of it in an academic setting, I have an easy enough time going through and understanding what's being said. Like, I don't have to spend so much time. The only thing that I will say really, really helps me is don't laugh, spark notes. But I'm not spark, spark noting it just to, like, get through it for a class. I've never done that. Like, honestly, I swear to God, I've never done that. But... I found that reading the spark notes summary of the play before getting into it is actually really helpful because having that outline of where the trajectory of the play is going and the basic characters and the sort of overall plot summary is really helpful because then as I'm reading this I'm not focusing on oh I got to keep track of the plot oh I don't know where this is going so while I'm reading the actual like play itself I know oh, this is where we are in the general trajectory, and then I only have to worry about the language and understanding the line-to-line -line dialogue. So that's what I find is really helpful. As I'm going throughout the play, I'm not, like, looking up the spark notes for each scene. I'm just taking it for what it is because I do have knowledge about Shakespeare. So all of that rambling to say that I am enjoying All's Well That Ends Well so far. I am planning on finishing it before the end of the week, obviously, so I have it fresh in my mind for the play. And that means that I really only have this that I'm currently reading. Well, technically, I'm still currently reading Unwell Women, which is a nonfiction. But it goes sort of in different chapters, and I feel like it's pretty easy to sort of pick this one up and put it down. Um, so you might see me reading this one later, but I have, a, I have a feeling that the books that are coming in the mail, hopefully today, I'm sure I'm going to want to pick one of those up soon. So hopefully I don't get too distracted from All's Well That Ends Well. But that is the very long rambling update of what's going on right now. Hello, welcome to my car. So I have some updates. I ended up receiving the books that I was talking about in the last clip. Uh, yesterday and I really haven't been home at all because I've been covering shifts at work so I will show you them later but very exciting news I am currently waiting to go into my appointment to get a new tattoo so I figured I would bring you along with me and just update you and when I get out and I have a brand new tattoo I will show you so I know I haven't really been doing a lot of reading in this vlog but trust me when I say that I did read all of All's Well That Ends Well the past two days. I finished it. I will go into more detail about that later. But that is the update. So I will see you when I have a new tattoo. 
Okay, I am home and she's here. I don't know if you can see. Let me stand on my bed. It looks like this. So I'll put a better photo up so you can actually see the tattoo, but I got some of my grandmother's handwriting. Um, I was very close with her and she passed away when I was seven. So I just wanted to get something of hers written on me and I had been looking for something with her handwriting on it for a long time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then in quarantine, my family went through our office and found a card that was written in 2005 that had some of her handwriting. So I got that tattooed as well as some ginkgo leaves, which are related to it in that the symbology of ginkgo leaves, which is like resilience and endurance and peace. Um, all of those things are qualities that I associate a lot with my grandmother. And I also just think they're really pretty. So I wanted to get some ginkgo leaves. I just have to wait for this bad boy to heal up. And I'm so excited to see what it looks like all healed, but it's so beautiful. And I'm very, very happy with it. So thank you for coming along with me on this little mini trip to the tattoo parlor. I promise we will be reading soon. But that reminds me, I wanna show you some of the books that I got in the mail from my little Barnes & Noble haul. So I got a book that I've been talking about for a while. It is a Icelandic translated book and I was waiting for it for months. And that is Magma. Again, I do not know how to pronounce this author's name, but she's Icelandic. And I'm reading this right now. And so far it's just the kind of like sad girl book that I'm looking for. So so far very much enjoying it there'll be plenty of updates as we go along with it but i also got mostly dead things by kristen arnett which was a recommendation by my friend marina over on instagram but she really really likes this book and we have very similar reading tastes so i figured i would give it a shot and the cover is wonderful and then I have Miss Ice Sandwich by Miko Kawakami. I read her other book, Breasts and Eggs, recently and gave it a five star. It was one of my favorite books of the year so far. So I wanted to give this little short story a try. Sounds very interesting. And then lastly, I got The Letters of Shirley Jackson. Oh my God, I just hit myself in the face. It is a very giant book that is just shows you how giant of a book this is that I just hit myself in the face but it is a very big hardcover book of all of Shirley Jackson's letters and it was compiled by her son Lawrence so I don't know at what point I'm going to get to this but I needed to have it for my Shirley Jackson collection so yeah very exciting stuff that is my mini haul and those are my updates good morning everyone I have an iced coffee and I'm ready to tackle the day so the update for my reading is that I feel like I'm finally getting out of my little reading slump that I've been in. Um, after I decided to DNF the hierarchies, I read All's Well That Ends Well, and this book kind of got me back into reading again. So when I was trying to read the hierarchies, I was just struggling so bad with it, and I decided to DNF it, as I mentioned before. And after that, I went right to All's Well That Ends Well, and from here, I feel like I am back on track with reading. So this book itself was a three star. It's kind of something that I feel like was valuable for me to read, and I wanted to read it so that I would have context when I go see this play. But it's not something that's like, oh, this is a revolutionary, uh, you know, amazing thing that I've just read that's going to be a favorite of mine. Like, when I read Romeo and Juliet or The Comedy of Errors, I was immediately like, these are favorites of mine. And All's Well That Ends Well was not a favorite. But something I'm very excited about is how I can read this now without feeling like I'm overwhelmed by the language or that I need to constantly be referencing, like, uh, modern language translations, that kind of thing. I did use Sparknotes in the beginning just to get the plot summary, but after that I really didn't use it. And I attribute a lot of that to the fact that I have studied Shakespeare academically and not just in high school. I did a lot of stuff in high school and then I did a lot of Shakespeare in college. I was an English major and I took uh, a couple of Shakespeare specific courses. So I feel like I had a really good academic understanding of Shakespeare and how to pick apart the language and how to annotate it and all of that. And I've done so much of that. And I genuinely like enjoyed the process of annotating Shakespeare and like working through the meaning and the context of everything 
everything. But what I was so excited about with this one is that I could fully just read through it and after I used a summary in the beginning on Sparknotes, I did not refer back to Sparknotes. I did not refer back to any kind of like context or anything. And while you might say that I got less out of the play that way, and maybe I did, I still feel like I enjoyed reading this so much because I wasn't worried about it being an academic situation. I was just focused on, okay, now that I understand the overall plot, let me just work through this and glean from it what I, what I get from it. And I think that worked really well and it got me back into wanting to read. So now I have moved on to Miss Ice Sandwich, which is a novella by Miko Kawakami, um, translated from the Japanese. And I loved Breasts and Eggs, so I wanted to try out another one of her works. I will be reading Heaven soon as well, but I wanted to pick this one up because I just got it in the mail, so I'm excited about it. But I'm about halfway through, and it is so much different than Breasts and Eggs. Like, Breasts and Eggs talk so much more about adulthood, and this is really from a child's perspective and a young child at that, which is really interesting. Like, seeing an adult write a child's perspective is something that I don't encounter a ton with the, like, genres of books that I read. So it's really interesting to see Kawakami try to talk about a young boy's life and what he's experiencing. So the writing feels really juvenile in some ways, and at the beginning I was like, is this just the translation or is this intentional? And it seems like the childish aura and feeling of the book is intentional because he is a child, obviously. So I think it really makes sense and it works in that way. Um, but it's a lot different of a writing style than Breasts and Eggs. Breasts and Eggs felt so much more literary or like elevated in a certain way. And this one feels a lot more like sort of a diary or um, journal entry of a young child. So it is a first person narrative. So it really gets into the character's mind and shows us a side of this young boy that he's not willing to show other people. But so it's very personal. So far, I like it. It's definitely not as enjoyable so far as Breasts and Eggs. I just liked the themes of Breasts and Eggs a lot, and I think that kind of gave me some extra interest in the book as opposed to something like this, which is about, you know, a young child, which is something that thematically is interesting, but not quite as interesting as, like, the punk feminist vibes of Breasts and Eggs. So that's the current update. I am going to be going out for lunch very soon, and I might be going to the play today if it doesn't rain. If it does rain, it's gonna be next weekend. I will let you know. For now, I'm just gonna go drink my iced coffee, and I will see you later. Okay, hello, this is Editing Haley coming in to tell you that I don't have an outro. I did not film an outro or a clip after the play. I really enjoyed the play. It was quite a while ago. I'm not going to tell you how long ago it was now because I am just getting around to editing this video. But the play was amazing and I had a lot of fun with it and everything else is going pretty well. So that is the update. So this was a pretty chaotic video because I started in mid-July and currently we may or may not be in August. I won't tell you when in August, but I hope that you got something out of it or enjoyed it even though it was a little bit all over the place. So if you did enjoy it, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more reading vlogs and I will see you in the next one. Bye.